Okay guys, well I'm at Stokes Hill in the Flinders Ranges, South Australia, and yes, it says impassable for towing vehicles. This is a hill, it's extremely, extremely steep and rocky, but at the top gives you 360 degree views of the Flinders. And as I read this, I don't read impossible for towing vehicles, and I don't read towing vehicles not allowed. I see that as a perfect challenge as to if we can get the SRT, the ultimate off-road snowy river caravan up the hill. We've taken this thing around the entire Flinders Ranges and, and not had a single issue. And I mean, the tail, on, even on the deepest ruts, even in the deepest swept out river crossing, whatever, creek crossings, nothing has touched. It, it blows me away. I'm used to dragging a front draw bar or at least dragging the rear bar. On this, we've had 100 to 200 mil clearance almost at all times even in the worst of the washed out creeks and crossings here. Okay, so the challenge is, are we gonna make it up to the top? Clearly not many people try this and they specifically say you probably shouldn't. Let's give it a crack, I'll see you at the top. Well, here I am at the top of the hill. I hope it's not too windy in the microphone for you, but we're on a hill with 360 degree views, so there's not much option when it comes to the wind. But I can tell you that only the meanest four-wheel drives get up here. That sign at the bottom was not a joke. The climb up here is extremely, extremely steep, and of course going down is just as dangerous. And I gotta tell you, it was worth coming up here for three reasons. One, of course, the beautiful view. Two, to prove that Nissan Patrol is an amazing, amazing tow vehicle. You get great quality for the money. And three, of course, the Snowy River SRT is an amazing off-road caravan. We've taken this thing around the entire weekend and not touched anything. We have not touched the drawbar, we've not touched the arse end, and we've been going through some really hard washed out drains, a lot of creek crossings, and a lot of creek beds. You name it, it just didn't touch no matter where we went. The clearances on this caravan are what you expect in a four wheel drive caravan. Now I can't talk about this caravan's clearances without talking about what the suspension is. Of course, it's a coil spring suspension in this caravan. So you have a lot softer ride, but with that, they've got dual shock absorbers on every single spring. So I gotta say, I never noticed before having my other snowies what it was like to have a caravan tow behind you with shock absorbers on it because I've always had the torsion suspension and it tows beautifully. But this is just so different. When this hits a big bump, it just sort of cushions over it. I, I can't describe it any better than that and I can't compliment it any more than that. It is absolutely amazing. Now here's me jumping up on the roof and I'm not telling you all to, and in fact, you're not meant to do that on these snowies, but I'm just showing you an example of how strong these caravans are. This is me pulling my legs off the ground. Of course, I'm dampening how softly I come down. And of course, I'm careful as to where I stand, but this just is evidence of how strong this is. There's no damage up there. There's not even a hint of a mark, except for where my muddy boots have been stepping. And I guarantee you, if you do that on just about any timber frame caravan, you'll be in the caravan like that, because you'll be going straight through the roof. Now, you know we're in Flinders. I've told you about the caravan in the full driving and how it's handled, but I haven't gone over the external features and what's new. Now, this is just what's different from my original Snowy River Caravan. It's the thing I noticed when I jump into this. And that starts with the roof. The roof is a really interesting one. Not many people looked at, but at the back of the roof, there used to be a join on the fiberglass. So you'd have the fiberglass top, the fiberglass black and would have a join just like you see the ones on the side. My personal perspective of this, well, it was an unnecessary dam. You had water could run off the front of the caravan, 
but if it wanted the wind wanted to ever blow it back it just hit this connection it just created potential problems where there didn't need to be one well they've completely resolved that with the snowy river srt they've now bonded the entire back section so it's one smooth piece all the way from the front all the way over all the way back and all the way down you can see here there's no ability for any water ingress and there's nothing stopping the water from simply blowing straight off the back of the van now we'll say we've done the entire weekend with a completely factory caravan solar and all solar batteries you name it it's all on there from factory and a completely factory car except that i put some all-terrain tires on my car just to get a bit of extra grip for this exact example of us getting up on this monster of a hill now one that i find funny is the sully chos i'm really curious what you guys do with your solid chos because on our other caravan we used to put it in a, a sort of basket on the draw bar on the one before that we put it on a basket on the rear bar and with this one i've just jammed it in where the jerry can's meant to go and i just feel like i know some people actually put it in the tunnel boot i don't feel like that's the right answer that's got constant seepage essentially it's going to be always dripping it's not something i want to put in my caravan so I'm curious if you have a unique answer as to what you do with your solid chose, please let me know because I need to figure this one out. I also have the same question that goes with the, uh, the leveling ramps, with the ramps that go under the tires here. What do you do with them? Because personally, I don't like putting them away either. A lot of the time, they're gonna have mud built into them. Mine do right now. They're in the same thing. I'll put it in the spare jerry can holder, which works for now, but later on when we go for longer journeys, I'm gonna need all the fuel I can get. So I need to, locate another position for them to stay so i'm curious if you have a awesome idea or where you put them or you have a unique spot please put it in the comments and let me know so i can figure this one out because we've been caravanning for five years and honestly i don't feel like i've come across a great answer yet now another one we've got here of course we've got the toolboxes on the front it has a pretty cool thing the gas bottles actually slide out the other side on this side they've got another toolbox which i'm sure is made for your barbecue for a slide out on this adventure, we didn't have a diesel heater in it, so we decided to bring the generator. So at the moment, I've got the generator in there, which is just as cool. I mean, that is, it's like a four kilowatt generator, and I've just got it stashed up in the toolbox there, strapped down onto the slides. The slides lock when they're in, and they even lock when they're in the out position. It's just really, really well built. Now, another thing you get on the SRT, of course, is all the stone shield and the mud mats, all that. It, it, everything you see is included. It's absolutely amazing. The stone shield on the front, I mean, you've got evidence of where the mud flicks. The same spot that that mud flicks is the same area that the stones are gonna get thrown. And going underneath, you can see you've got a brush stone guard to stop the stones from hitting your water tanks. I personally can attest to this. On one of my trips, I threw a stone back and I smashed the tap off of my water tank. We lost 190 liters and it completely ruined the entire weekend. So Snowy have really thought about all these small details and they're all done for you. You don't need to think about them once you buy it. It's just set up to go. And of course, being a all-terrain vehicle or off-road, whatever you want to call it, it comes with larger rims and larger tires to give that extra clearance underneath the van. And of course, every SRT comes with a DO35 hitch. Personally, I thought I was going to dislike this because I like being able to manipulate the hitch with my hand. But I was surprised that DO35, I think from what I can understand, it's like a upside down cone in it. And so when you get close enough, as you're lowering it just sort of pulls itself onto the hitch or it pulls itself onto the pin which is not something a standard bull hitch has ever done so uh, considering how small the pin is and you need to be pretty good with reversing it's also quite forgiving snowy river have thought through the build process of this so much that the srt even comes with two shackles on the back in just in case when you're going forward and you sink your car into a pothole they can actually pull you back gently of course i'm sure it's not rated to have a elastic snatch strap pull it out but nonetheless you have the ability to get pulled back out of a hole absolutely awesome okay guys well if you want to see more adventures with the srt model make sure you subscribe if you want more information on it head to snowyrivercaravans.com.au or of course head into your local dealer thanks for watching